Welcome to yet another uh, look inside the box, see what we get. Now this is a very interesting one because obviously I've brought here clearly a boxing here for an RAF Mustang. This is actually a P51C. I think you can do a B variant as well. Yes, here's the 112 Squadron B variant. The difference being the Malcolm Hood here or the other style kind of thing. Basically, it's, it's an American P51 Mustang. You know, you, you, you can either use the, you, the RAF transfers in here or you can do what I'm probably going to be doing and do an American one because, you know, it's just it's where my fascinations are, are lying more. So, cracking box art got here we got Polish Squadron or Polish Flown, I think. I think it's actually the Polish Squadron. Oh, that's one. Yeah, 315 Polish Squadron here doing a night sortie against German ground targets. And uh, yeah, quite. Quite nice, not an awful lot of action. They've obviously dropped their bombs previously. Um, it could be a little bit more action going on there. Maybe some flat bursts might have been cool. Unless that's meant to be allied depot down there. That might be on a, an armed reconnaissance, I suppose, or something like that. But yes. No, got the NAF lights on. If it's home base, then. Yeah, the only thing I don't like is the propellers at a bit of a weird angle. But that's, I'm not an artist, so that's probably really hard to do. <laughs> anyway. It's a nice picture. It's a nice picture. It's... So everything's nice and individually baggied for us, even the transparency there. Um, yes. Oh, it's it's Tamir, isn't it? You know, the quality is going to speak for itself here. The undercarriage, well, there. Raised and flush rivets where appropriate. Take note, airfix and revel. Your B-17s. It's amazing how long ago in video release time those are compared to when I'm doing <laughs> to when this one's come out, but how close they are actually currently to when I uh, am done doing this one. Let's hope we can pose the uh, the flaps. Um, Transparency, you see there's the Malcolm Hood, and there's the, um, I don't know, actually it's, it's, it's called like a birdcage type thing, but you can have them open, you got open and shut variants for, for the... Uh, the B, not for the C though, that's interesting. It was which factory they were built as well. One factory built well let me this off. I used to know which one it was. I used to know all the factories. Uh yes, excuse me a second, it's just falling in my eye. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Don't like being blind. But yes, uh I used to remember which factory it was, but I can't remember now. Ah. But yes, that's the difference between the two. Next bag, we've got a pilot. We have a pilot figure now. I wonder, is that standard for the American release? Or is that actually an RAF flying gear? That's interesting. We'll have to get, let's we'll see if we can find the uh, American boxing of the same aircraft. And if I can get a transfer set that allows me to do um, more than one of this. Uh, you know, this, this, this version of the Mustang, then um, it'd be pretty good to uh, be able to actually you know, do a comparison and actually see if that pilot figure is the same. In fact, while we're here, something like that. Tell me, I think I was, I was going to be doing this Bavario, uh, the Spa Vario, the, the SM79 tonight, but I think actually, as it's a chill out in my chum, and I've been promising myself a Tamiya kit just for the enjoyment value of being able to build something that, uh, there's a staple on the floor somewhere now, I think. Oh no, it's falling inside the back, I got really lucky there. Um, let's have a good look at that pilot. Just make it as easy as possible. I think I'm going to do this, because it's, it's a, it gives me a real, real opportunity there to, uh, to compare that obviously to the, the other one that's really cool um i'll have to see if you can just do it wheels up or down you've got different sizes of exhaust here um but yeah if i can find a transfer pack has two maybe if i want to do in the same pack then uh, that would be pretty cool i like this 
so you don't get a mould line or a drawing line on top of the cowling. Obviously, you're going to get one back here. But props in separate sections, that's always interesting. So it's getting them angled correctly. Hopefully, they've got little lips or something. They have, they've got little lips to help to aid. Everything's just so crisp and beautiful. There is a little tiny bit of flash here and there. Got choice of some bombs. There's some the America style fins on the back there. Look at that with Tom Gregory's video earlier. And some fuel tanks, external long range tanks. I think it was said, wasn't it? The P 51 could do what the Spitfire could do, but it could do it over Berlin. And I think. Much like my favourite quote about the Battle of Britain between the uh, Hurricane and the Spitfire, about you know, the one likes to go, Oh, Hurricane was the, the underdog, it shot down 50% of the, the bomber force, which goes up to 60%, depending on who you ask. Yes, well, there were more Hurricanes, so of course they're going to do a lot more of the shooting down because you know, it's more of them to do it. But um, it comes back to that fantastic quote by one of the pilots, and I must find out who, who it was. Who, I'm sure he flew both during the battle. He said, We couldn't have fought it without the Hurricane, it might even be harder to be honest, but we couldn't have won it without the Spitfire. They both did their bit. And the same with the P 51 and the Spitfire. You know, you couldn't have fought the Second World War without the Spitfire because of the work it did, not just on the Battle of Britain, but around, around the world really, doing its, doing its thing um, as an interceptor, but we couldn't have won it without the P 51, I think, because of you know, that, that escort that could make it all the way to Berlin. And a total air supremacy fighter in that. So you get an instruction sheet, you get a lovely photograph of the built model with, with the bombs attached and so on. Um, a bit of information, so you can pause that and read that if you like. I'm trying to make this one quick because I'm standing by for uh, an incoming call potentially, so uh, if it cuts, there's a little fade, you know that I had to go. But uh, yeah, start with the Interior, all very basic, usual stuff for a P-51 build. This is, if you ever build one in it, just about any scale, this is basically what you get. Going in, very cool, very simple colours going in as well. So it gives you a specific exhaust there to follow. So I'm going to have to look at my transfers, see what I get. But yeah, look at that. Nice, simple, easy to follow. Flaps going in, sure. Yeah, we can cut. We can cut those if you want to. To pose them up. Yeah, flap up. Here we are. Just remove those those little nubs there, as it says. Radio rear shutter closed. You can pose it open, I suppose. By uh... oh, there's open. Opens on that one. So you can study your pictures. I know for the undercarriage, the doors, I think they should be, should they be open or closed? I know there's one which means they haven't uh, bled the hydraulic system or you know, whatever that does it. And it means you potentially can raise the undercarriage um, if you don't, if you don't do whatever makes the doors go either up or down when it's stopped. Um, I think they could start meant to be closed. If you see them open, you potentially can o you can actually raise the undercarriage. There's enough pressure to raise the undercarriage while oh, it's on the ground remaining. Uh, Kermit Weeks video. Check his starting the Mustang video. Find the Mustang video. Um, it gives you a full walk around and pre-flight checks and everything and tells you all about that. Wheel assembly. How it should all look. And you see they've got them open. I'm sure they should be closed. I think they. Well, should they be in I don't know. I don't know my head, I do apologise for that one. But anyway, you get the drift, you decide like you're going to check the video out. If I remember, I'll put it in the description, a link to it. Propeller. Gun sight not going until later, I like that because it means you can do plenty of work around it without getting it all altered. You're going to have to get some uh, masking sets for this as well. Make sure I get the right version as well. Bring it all together at the end, obviously I'm going to leave this off, leave the exhaust out because it makes painting so much easier. Oh, sorry. And for colour scheme C, you've got the, yeah, the canopy coming on here. Okay, so our three schemes, in, as it comes in the kit, are 
316 Polish Squadron, which is not the box I want, it's another one. It appears the box I want, who knows. Oh yes, we've got 316 and 315, obviously used the same um, squadron codes. So whether that's a typo, maybe that's from 2P15 as well, it's 2315. And then Scheme C is 112 Squadron. Kind of suits it, doesn't it? Famous for flying their P40s. And Scheme D here is 315 again. It's, it's a, a bare metal. P51, RFP short one, something a bit different. But yeah. So like I say, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of quick research now to see what transfers are available. And um quickly filming this just ahead of time just so uh, <laughs> I can I can build it. I think yeah, I'm gonna do this one and I'll build the SM79 as a, a more personal project as the weekend goes on. Alrighty, so till then, stay safe, be well, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Sorry about that, hold your horses a second. We didn't look at the transfer sheet, and here we are. So you get an instrument panel there, some little stand saws and stuff. There's not an awful lot of stand saws, really nice to see for a change. Just a few, so there's a seat belt in that if you don't want to put the pilot in. And there's all your IRF trunks, transfers, and rondels, so there's no white dot in these, you have to put them in separately. So it's in the older kits. But they look to the usual timing quality. I quite like timing transfers. Never give me much problem. It's nice and thin. Give you the side of you there. What have you got? Hannah's website open up there. Printed in Japan, 1996. This kit. So this is one of those good classic mid 90s Tamiya aircraft kits in 48 scale. And this is what Chris Becker of Becker's Models recommends getting if you're um, starting new with the hobby. Again, is to get the get one of these ones rather than getting one of the ancient old airfix kits or something because this is more akin to what you get from modern model kits as opposed to you know you'll still pick up the skill you'll pick up the skills you're more likely to need if you if you buy newer kits and stuff. I tend to agree with you. That's fine. If your first kit, you want something that's going to go together really nicely and work really well. I mean, I think this is about the same era again. Is my roof seaplane. Not massive de amounts of detail, but nice detail. This is before I used Microsoft Microsoft. Uh, actually, I managed to uh, break the engine in this one, so it's, it's all wobbly at the front. It's a bit frustrating. I'm not sure I'm going to get around now, apart from trying to gently maybe take this off. I suppose it's already broken, but it'd uh, be good to repair it because that's the only thing that's not, not right on it. But yeah. So, yes. Anyway, so I'll say again stay safe, be well. I really have finished this time. And I'll see you in the next one, I hope. Bye.